I'm going to get started on dry brushing the Colossus skin. So bear in mind what I have so far is the bottom dark patches that are going to be showing through the lighter spots. Um, and in the game those dark spots are very dark. Um, probably too dark. So I am taking a little bit of an artistic liberty and lightening them up just a hair. And it looks like I thought this was about 80% um, gray or 80%. Would it be 80% black or would it be 80% gray if it's towards the black 80% of the way there? Well, whatever it is, it looks like it needs to be a little bit brighter than that because that is making absolutely no difference. I still want all the creases and cracks to be as dark as they are, but the majority of the surface area I want to be a little bit lighter. Otherwise, I just I think he's going to look too much like a like a cow or like camouflage which it doesn't come off that way in the game really but I don't know on this size of a sculpture it just that's my instincts is telling me that's just too darn dark going into this that this was probably a bad idea however I f mm, it's really close to being awesome the he needs his bangs naturally and the real downside is the place where I mat the hair on there with the Mod Podge gets really gross looking um, and see, you don't you don't notice it all the way down because it's covered by the layer above it. But once you get to the top, there's no layer to cover it. However, conveniently, Wander has this little headband thing. And I'm thinking, man, if I put a layer of hair down without gluing it, that would go uh, back over this uh, gross part and down over the bangs and then I used some material to pin it down I don't like I could super glue some thread across there or some I could use some epoxy sculpt um, and, and then paint it like the headband again if I could get it thin enough this is really interesting one thing I could do is literally I could drill a hole in the side of his head, you know, just just behind the ear, probably, and then there I could super glue a thread, one end of a thread, 
and then put the hair down, put the thread over, super glue it in the other side, and then the hair hanging over there would, would hide where it enters the head, in theory. Yeah, I'm gonna try this. Cause yeah, it's it's really cool seeing them with uh, with fuzzy hair like that. I, I wanna try to style it. I've got um this stuff that I use for my own hair. In fact, let me just do a real a test real quick here and see if this stuff styles like my hair does. Itty bitty fingers, which I think, which means I can use these rubbery nubberies. What happens if I just work it in with this? Not bad. It's a little bit um, wet looking, but that doesn't bother me. He's been climbing a 80 foot tall monster who's not gonna be sweaty and gross by the time they get on top. Let's see what my itty bittiest drill bit does. Time for some minor brain surgery. All right, got some thread. I'm going to maybe quadruple it up and see if because that hole in the side of the head is pretty big yeah that'll definitely fit and I do not want to risk having an open super glue bottle right over the head of my finely painted wander so Gonna try to import a drop from somewhere else. Great job, scissors. Only took four hacks to get through thread. Alright, the thread is good and embedded. Not sure yet how I'm going to get the thread really tight and shoved in that hole. We'll see when we get there. For now, oh hey, it just occurred to me, I can Mod Podge on the headband because there's going to be another headband going over it, so I can get that hair stuck down good and tight. Alright, oh, 
let that dry and see how that turns out. In the meantime, one final painting test to figure out. And that is the skin. So, in the texture, let's look at the texture sheet. Here's what we got. Dark spots, which got that covered. Here's gonna be the dark that you see. Then you've got medium gray over, looks like about 70%. And then this white, near white, over about 10%. Now, the gray and the white look like where you primarily see the, the lines, the, these, you know, the textural folds and wrinkles and stuff. You don't really see those in the black in this texture, because, um, well, it's just a crappy texture really low res and not very much depth to it so I presume that that skin texture continues in the dark as well and so when I paint over this I'm going to maintain the texture there but these white patches very much remind me of this kind of lichen that you see on castles and stuff. And so I kind of want to see if I can do these with a little bit of their own kind of texture to it. So a texture that overrides the, the primary lines, the tree bark texture. And so one way to do that is with very thick paint. The problem is as paint dries, especially acrylic paint, the water evaporates out of it and you're left with, um, it shrinks down, you don't have that volume. I do have some puffy paint, so I'm going to do an experiment with that. And I have, I can just use a uh, white um, epoxy sculpt and water it down a lot and see what that looks like. So. Those are the two tests I'm going to try and see how they turn out. All right, puffy paint. Let's find it. This stuff is for t-shirts, I believe. Okay, so I could use the black puffy paint um, and then paint it white, but that's quite a waste. I could wait till tomorrow because I think it's 2 a.m. right now, so I don't think Michael's is open. Uh, okay, well, I'm just going to do the one test and see how it works with the epoxy clay. Actually, I might as well try the air stuff since that's uh, cheaper. I wonder if they sell containers that are shaped like this. I should really look for that. Okay. Um, don't need a lot for this test. Okay. So I'm going to leave half of it out. in case this first test doesn't do what I expect it to. And then I'm going to mortar and pestle this sucker. Just mix in my dirty paint water. Man, this is as hard as mixing protein powder. how well that's mixed but it's some kind of a mix let's see what happens when you paint it on ok 
Okay. Well, it flows into the cracks nicely. But it is not giving me much coverage. Okay. Working with hair and paint at the same table at the same time, it's not fun. Okay. I think I need to get it to like, um, not peanut butter thickness, but at least a slurry so it doesn't just run into the cracks. I want just a thin skin. That is not doing it. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. So, does that still carry forward some of the texture underneath it? Don't want it to obliterate that. I think it needs to be darker than that too. It's hard to tell without context. Let's look at this texture again. Well, I guess that's not too far off. The unfortunate thing that it's doing is pooling in the cracks, making it lighter in the cracks and darker on the bumps. And that is not what I want. If I need it darker, I can add some pigment to it. But I think that's it's still going to run into the problem of having light cracks and dark peaks. Alright, well, we'll set that to the side and see what it ends up doing. I've got another idea. Another idea um, for getting that slightly dimensional look that I want would be to use a matte medium or just any kind of paint medium. I think I have matte, matte gel, yes. Okay, so gel is already nice and thick. It says heavy body and it's translucent. So whatever color I put into it will come through. So let me make a gray, mix it with this and see what happens. Oh hey, okay, so besides this uh, matte gel, I also have this Dimensional Effects Paintable Texture Paste. So this is opaque. I'm guessing it's white. It is. So I can just mix some black with it to get the gray that I need. So I'm going to go ahead and try this first. Directions say you can add up to 20% acrylic paint. I have no idea if this amount of black is 20% or not. We'll see. If anything explodes, then you'll know it's more than 20%. Or, you know, more likely scenario, it just kind of sloughs off after a year. I can go it's even brighter than that at this point I'm just going to put some white over there and slowly introduce that gray until I get the color that I want oh yeah that's what I'm talking about Now because it's so thick, it leaves these obvious brush strokes. Let's see what dabbing does for that. 
put a little paint on and dab and get a different effect. I don't think that's blowing out the directionality of the uh, skin. And get a little of those white spots in there. And kind of accentuate some of the uh, creases just using the body of the gel. Let's see what happens when I use a different tool for dabbing the white bits on. brush is a little angry with me right now. I don't think it liked going in that uh, slurry that I made. But I think that is pretty darn good. Yeah. Okay. Let's call that uh, test one for Deco Art Dimensional Effects. Now we'll try some matte medium, matte gel. And I have a feeling this is gonna be pretty much the same, except that we'll need to mix uh, black and white in with it. All right, well this clearly doesn't have as much body as the uh, dimensional paint does, but it does keep the texture of the skin really well. And it looks like in areas where I want to override the texture of the skin, I can just pile on more. Yeah. Now I'm not sure since, since the matte gel is, if I understand it correctly, it's transparent. Okay, it's a matte non-reflective finish. Opaque when wet, dries translucent and matte. Yeah, so I don't know how different this will look when it's dried. It may be um, darker than this, showing the, the black underneath. Um, yeah, so that's why I'm testing it. We'll find out. But I think I like this better. Um, let me try doing the, the white dots in there. All right, let's set that aside to dry. And we'll get back to our crazy harebrained scheme. The one that you thought wouldn't work. That is some pretty crazy hair going on right now. I think I want to glue this guy in before I do any more cutting. I'm not sure why, but I do. Oh, you know what? I don't even have to stick these in that hole. They just kind of blend into the hair. I think. We'll see. Let's continue this haircut. Finally, all those years of styling my hair crazy is paying off. I like what the hair is doing on this side because it covers up this wonky eye. The way it was printed, I don't know, it just it, uh, it was kind of the rough side. So when I was sanding it down, I think it kind of wrecked the eye a bit. So, hooray for emo bangs.
Okay, so I just want to say for the record that I recognize that this look is weird. Like, it looks a little bit like cheap taxidermy. A, a little bit. Um, however, I do feel like it looks less weird than um, with the sculpted hair. Let's do a side-by-side -side comparison, shall we? So the sculpted hair is fine when he's on his own, but I am convinced that when he is on a big pile of fur with actual strands of hair going everywhere and he's grabbing hair with his hand, that's just gonna look worse than that. So, that is my decision. I'm sure it's uh, not going to sit well with everyone and that's okay. When you make your own four foot tall Colossus with a wonder on top, you make them the way you want. All right, um, do I need to do more testing on the armor before I go forward? I don't think so. I think I'm ready to actually start actual production. Yeehaw, let's go. What is tonight? Tonight is Sunday night? Yes. It's Sunday night. I have to be done by Wednesday night. So that's, I have all day tomorrow, Monday, and then Tuesday and then Wednesday. So yeah, three days. This is going to suck. Might as well start at the bottom and work our way up.
All right, so this is just unfortunate. Uh, I thought it was too dark, so I lightened it up by dry brushing it a day or so ago. And now that I'm putting the medium gray on, I'm not seeing enough contrast, so apparently it was dark enough to begin with. So, I think, I mean, again, that's why you, you do it on areas where um, viewers can't see the sculpture to begin with and for your testing. Um, so, this is especially unfortunate because there is maybe, maybe I have about 30 hours left before this has to be done. So, yeah, I think, I think a fast enough way to do this is to blast it with black spray paint, a matte black spray paint that will dry within 20 minutes. Then I can do the dry brush, which dries almost instantly because it's so thin. Then I can get back to this stuff. I think. We'll see. Uh, I'm going to take this outside and spray paint it. Look at this cute little bird built a nest in our wreath that we have on the front door. So every time we open the door, it flies out to distract us. Pretty fun. Probably not for the bird. He's probably freaked out all the time, but wasn't my choice to put a nest there. Now another unfortunate thing is that I have fur on these, so spray painting is uh I'm just gonna have to try to avoid the fur. Spray paint it at night, always awesome. Especially with my delightful auto light that just randomly comes on and off. So I printed these out, double sided, made sure they lined up perfectly and were mirrored so that they in case there's any like bleed through or you know you could kind of see through it a little bit you'd see exactly the same image so his tabard is a physics object in the game which means it moves around with a physics simulation so when he runs it flaps behind him and stuff dynamically um, so I think I have full artistic license to make this as cool as I want it to be. Kind of, I want to emphasize the downward thrust. So I probably want, so I probably want a silhouette that has at least the back flying off dramatically. I don't know if I want the front doing that or not. For a really stupid reason, I want the front to be blowing away so you can see what an awesome texture is on the shirt. But that's kind of a... You don't want to have your composition driven by little details like that. Composition always trumps details. Now that's interesting to have that kind of that twist going on. tricky part is bunches up around the shoulder Where's the you can see actually they've baked into the texture these folds so that it will always look like uh, it's got more geometry than it actually does but um, hey it, uh, it works on small scale miniatures too like that totally looks like it's folded there um, but I do want to actually do a physical fold as well. Don't want to completely cheat. I mean, printing out a texture from the game is already pretty cheaty. But So, I'm guessing... I don't know if it's supposed to just like hang slack over his shoulders, or if it's 
attached, like threaded into his tunic somehow. But I imagine I probably want it making contact with both sh shoulders really well. So I wonder, maybe, maybe what I'll do is I'll just, I'll super glue it at two points and then I'll play with it further from there. So if I want this to flop up this way, I guess, yeah, one way would be to pull this up like that and do that, but that kind of, I don't know, that, that looks kind of awkward to me. Like it's interfering with the, with the visual clarity of him about to thrust a sword down. It's got all this crazy jumble behind it. So I kind of want this to be a smoother, easier to interpret arc. So see this, this line going from this corner up to the shoulder where it attaches, that's a nice smooth arc. And that, that doesn't fight visually with this very clear, you know, vertical line that I want to maintain the clarity of. This I think looks pretty cool from several different angles. Um, I don't know if it's too weird that it's like flying off like a cape, which, you know, this, this would be a cool superhero kind of cape flutter thing. But the fact that it continues down the front makes it odd. And I don't know, like, if I want to keep, you know, because it is a tabard, meaning that it drapes down the front and the back. And when I have it up like this, it kind of fights the tabardness of it and makes it confusing as to what it is. At least that's my gut. What happens if I pull it the other direction? Yeah, that's even weirder, because then it's like a, it almost looks like a helicopter propeller just kind of sticking through his neck. As dynamic as it is flying up like that, and I really like it, I think from other angles it's just too weird, so I'm going to have to sacrifice some of that dyna diamond, dy dynamism? Dynamism. That sounds right. Oh, okay, I'm going to brush on some Mod Podge now. First I need to fish all the gross looking hairs out of there. My strategy here is that because I use texture stamps instead of doing it the more legit way, which would be to hand do all of the wrinkles um, to make them all, you know, flow perfectly, um, I took a shortcut by using a stamp. And so there's places where the stamps are just overlap awkwardly or whatever. They didn't blend together well, and because I knew I was going to be doing this uh, additional texture on top of it, I felt like that was a pretty good idea. I was able to save time on the folds and wrinkles, and I can cover all the places where it's awkward with this other texture slash color. The, the actual black spots that show through are pretty minimal. Most of the area is this gray.
is that I think the places where I'm covering texture that I really like with this, I'm going, um, I'm smoothing it out more. I'm not leaving it all stippled and dimpled. The, the areas that I that have these like long dark patches of alternate skin texture um, I am basically going to just minimize the amount of gray in that area to have a smoother transition than what's out on the actual model. Okay, it is, wow, look at this. This is called not taking care of your brushes. I, huh. This is what happens when you stay up for 36 hours straight doing only one thing. So, I did manage to put a lid on my paint from last night, quote unquote, i.e. this morning. Um, but, uh, I really like these brushes. Oh well. So, I am now at the point where I have, let's see, what time is it? It's about 4 o'clock p.m. And I gotta go to work tomorrow morning. I gotta leave at about 9, so let's see. 4 to 4 would be 12 hours. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 20, I have 29-ish hours. To f <laughs> Hilarious. Okay. So, I woke up fresh, quote unquote, this morning, and now I have this list of things to do to finish in the next 29-ish hours. <sighs> uh, and so the useful thing about making this list is that I have the different components spread out, the skin, the hair, um, uh, the armor, and then there's like miscellaneous stuff that I need to do to prep for the show. Uh, and this will help me to prioritize what needs to come first because I need to do some stuff and while that's drying I'll bounce to the other components and back and forth. 
And so all that's left on the skin is to do the high, oh, I totally forgot, now that I'm out here looking at it, I forgot the, um, the bone parts. Bones. That's going to be another couple of steps, because that's going to need probably, um, you can probably get away with just a base coat and then a wash will probably work fine for those. Hello? This is not an important call regarding my Google business account. Okay. So, yeah, so, uh, I think I'm going to do the white speckles on the skin, then I'm going to bounce to the armor, do the lichen part, and then while that's drying, I'll come back to the skin and do the wash, and then while that's drying, I'll go back to the armor, oop a doop a doop and, oh man, the hair, I still, <laughs> this is hilarious, like, when I was envisioning this project, I was expecting to maybe spend a week to suss out, haha, <laughs> pun not intended, but it works, to suss out the hair, figure out how it's going to lay, how to cut it properly, how to do the seams well, but uh, instead I'll spend an hour or two. It'll be fine, it'll be fine. Trust me guys, it'll be fine. All right, so remember how I went back and repainted the entire base coat of this uh, dark black because I didn't like how light the spots were? Or how dark the, the dark was compared to the lighter skin? Um, hilariously, now that I'm looking at it with the lighter skin, I really feel like the dark spots need to be not so dark. So I'm going back in and basically uh, doing a, another light dry brush over the dark spots. Um, yeah, I, you know, it's experimenting. That's what art is. It's just unfortunate when a uh, self-imposed deadline makes you get super stressed about that kind of natural process and makes you wince and cringe every time it happens. But one of the nice things about doing it at this point is I'm working in some natural variation in, in how dark the spots are. So it's not going to be um, exactly the same effect over the whole surface, which is good to have some variation. When you look at, at pictures of hippos and rhinos and elephants, you always see a variety of things going on on different parts of their body. The color for this highlight is still, you can see, really dark, but, um, and so it's, it's darker than the light coat, but because it's just a dry brush going over it, it's not really obscuring the, uh, the lighter part to any significant degree. If anything, it's just kind of marrying the two, making the, the splotchy less, splotchiness uh, less I don't know what else to call it, less camouflage. Like, I, I just keep fighting that. I don't want it to look like camouflage or like um, those, those black and white spotted cows, you know, that are those, I don't know, they're kind of the symbol for dairy cows in the U.S. Um, you know, dairy cow is not something I want to be evoked when viewers look at this piece. It's not what I feel when I play the game. I don't feel, ooh, I'm gonna climb up that giant cow. All right, I don't even know if the camera is gonna pick up that there was any difference whatsoever, but I feel like, I feel like I got it closer to where it needs to be. And also, after the wash goes over it, it's going to seep into all the cracks of the lighter area and marry the spots to the light yet again. So, I think that two-pronged approach is going to bring me back to where I want it to be, what it evokes, which is not what I was...
feeling like it was achieving. So, awesome. Uh, time for light spots. I got these. These are all the brushes that I have that I feel will make good little stipply spec speckles. This kind of white dottiness. Um, and so, just do some experiments and see what gives me the best speckles. Again, I'm using the Liquitex Matte Gel for the base of it and then just mix in some white paint. With this coat, I went about half and half. Half paint to half uh, medium. This is tricky mixing white with it because it's already visually white before it's dry. If anything, I'm going to overdo it a little bit. Oh, actually, that's right, I almost made a new mistake and made a, made a white paint for a sculpture, which I think I've said several times, don't ever use pure white. And by ever, I mean usually. There's exceptions to everything. But I mean, if you look at this picture, if you did a, uh, a little point scan of, or not scan, what is that tool called? Oh, oh the eyedropper tool, right? And you looked at the lightest point on this image, it is not going to be white. That's just lighter than the stuff around it. When I mentioned exceptions, uh, I want you to consider exceptions to, to pure white. I want you to consider eyeballs and think what color should you paint a figure's eyeballs? And that's a trick question because it is not white. Or maybe that's not a trick. That's kind of the point of what I was saying. You do not use white for eyeballs. Looks like it's got a little bit of body to it. It's definitely lighter. Let's do a little test patch here. Yeah. See, compared to this black and this, you know, medium gray, that looks white, doesn't it? But it's not. If it was pure white, it would look cartoonish or illustrated. And there's an exception. If you're doing a cartoon character, then yeah, use white for the eyeballs and white for highlights and stuff. So I'm looking for a brush that's been really destroyed. You see how the edges are um, really, they're frayed, at, they're splayed outward, right? But then on top of that, they're also all kind of hooked and mostly outward, but really I'm just looking for that random distribution of points. So when I dab the paint down, I get a, I get a little shotgun spread there. This is actually feeling like it might still be too bright. Yeah, I'm going to darken that up a little bit more. One thing I'm trying to avoid is doing a white spot in the largest area of gray everywhere. This is in the image you can see like here it's close to black, here it's like almost surrounded by black. Um, there it's kind of in the middle of that gray patch. So it just, it, I need to make sure I'm varying it in relation to the other um, shapes. There aren't any areas where it is actually in the black. There's always some gray touching or around the light area. So I'm just trying to respect those rules. Actually, I might do a little bit of a one-two punch here. I may as well paint the, uh, the bone spurs while I've got the sculpture out and tilted in all these awkward angles. Normally I would not do the bones with the, uh, the thickening agent in there because I would want the, I don't want the paint creating its own shapes on laying on top of the shapes that I already sculpted. Um, but in this case I can, I can spread it thin enough where it looks like it's not being a problem. Also, I'm taking advantage of how the white is such a uh, kind of a bright pop of visual noise 
that it will distract your eye from bad stuff. So I've got this like flat area right here. And let's see. Ah. I've got this flat area in the sculpt right there, like between where I had stamps pressed or maybe the end of a stamp pressed down in there. So there's a little bit of a depression. It doesn't look that great. So I'm just gonna go pop and cover that with white and it'll be like, it never happened. In fact, I'm going in and pulling some peaks up with the, taking advantage of how thick the paint is to add uh, three dimensional information there to further hide the, the bad sculpt underneath. Oh wait, I just thought of something. There's, I don't need to use the same paint on the horns just because I'm painting them at the same time as the spots. So I'm going to mix some, some more ivory colored paint for those. I may actually just have ivory colored paint in here. Another nice thing about painting the bones at this point is that places where I get a little bit of extra paint touching the skin, well, I've got my, my skin color here, the highlight at least, and I can just go in and dot around it, make it look like it was intentional.